Hello everybody, it's Neil and today I'm playing Ghost of Tomorrow. I know nothing about this game, so let's find out what it is. Created by Ed Leone. Music by Mika Peacock. Move, wazd. Interact left click, flashlight F. There's been strange things going on tonight. Must be tired. Gonna go to bed and get some sleep. Ooh. Very smooth. Well, I can't really activate my flashlight. Kitchen. Guys are very beefy, uh stove we've got here yes let us inspect this kitchen so we've got a clock with a glow in the ha glow in the dark second hand we're on the 24th of august so i assume we're locked down very nice painting american style fridge man Look at the colour of that microwave. I could not put up with that. <laughs> That's old yellow plastic right there. Do put your waste away. Where's your bin? You don't even have a bin. Come on. Oh, right. Okay, guys. Never do this. Never open a tin and leave the top open like that. Because I learned the hard way, one time at work, I very quickly opened the tin of summer, I was rushing, I was rushing, I was rushing, and then next thing you know, I just went whoosh, like that, sliced my wrist over the tin. Luckily it wasn't deep, it was, it barely penetrated the skin, but it could have been a lot worse. Never, ever do that. Ever. Uh green chopping board wow that's modern it's even got the vegetable tab at the top chef's knife and yeah see uh, instinctively because of work I just assume these are meat drawers <laughs> so you open them up and there'll be just trays of steaks and chicken in there and things but if we're being honest it's probably an oven a bit old looking frying pan but sometimes the old ones really are the best very nice let's see oh we can open that door wait could I not open that one earlier let's find out I was pressing on E and that no oh there's my, my shadow by the way So, I assume I'm a lady. What's this? Butterflies. What's that? Looks like cornflakes. That a cluster of cornflakes. So pretty. Pretty autumn. Big decision now. I'm going to go through this door. Because I think that's the correct door. So I'm going to go through this door. Oh no, it's a bed. I don't want to get to bed yet. I need to explore. This is darkness. Bathroom light is out again. There's the bin. They put a carrier bag in the bin. I'll just put a Asda bag in there or something. Our oh, coffee's probably stone cold by now. What a shame. Go to sleep. A lot of very general photographs. There's no personal photographs here. Right, let's go to sleep. We are now sleeping.
That's my alarm clock. Could do without that. This is from me, ma'am. All right. Love you, ma'am. So English, isn't it? Amanda, are you coming home next weekend? Amanda, are you coming home next weekend? Amanda, I've been calling and texting you for two days and you haven't answered. I haven't heard anything from you for days. Where are you? Are you okay? Please call me. Well, let's call her then. Just put your phone down. Should your mum call her? Let her know you're alright, she's worried sick. Uh, oh, there's somebody at the door, wait. It is at half eleven at night, isn't it? Why would someone be at the door at half eleven at night? Come in. I mean, we really shouldn't answer it, it's nothing good. No people. Gail, it's me, Martha, Amanda's mother. Do you know where Amanda is? She hasn't answered my phone calls for two days. Please, if you know anything, call me. I hope we don't have to remember that number. Is that noise? Oh no, I hate it when my cannons are glitches. I like the way that they're transitioning for each day. They are making it quite spooky. Oh no, I recognise that hairstyle. Look. That's us. That's me. I'm Amanda Graham. Missing person, Amanda Graham. Last seen outside Harvey University on August 23rd. Wearing a white tank top and jean shorts, brown eyes, dark hair. 5'7", 120 pounds, age 24. Please contact Martha Graham if found. Oh, oh, someone's crying. Two days later, still haven't put the garbage away. Garbage, rubbish. The rubbish. Oh, it's a bit harrowing. Is that even coming from? Oh, that was creepy. That was creepy. Oh, we've got the flashlight. Missing student body found, stabbed by roommate, alleged killer turned himself into the police. Police searched for Amanda's whereabouts for two weeks. Amanda's roommate, 25 year old Gail Rogers, was arrested after confessing to hiding body. Body found in crawl space hidden between a false wall inside closet of Mr. Rogers' room. Amy Holland, Amanda's close friend, informed Amanda and Gail were good friends. I was shocked when I heard the news. Martha Graham, Amanda's mother, expressed i'm devastated i should have done something to avoid this now my baby is gone police found no previous conviction in roger's record rogers was charged with murder and hiding a corpse for which he will face court soon hmm. 
Mo. This guy will be behind the curtain, so you're gonna be like psycho. Hello, Gale. Flash. supposed to do Mm. Is it going to run at me? a bit then that was clever that was clever put me in a state of security and then just get me that one second that unnerved me you know we don't have to close the door honest we don't I guess that was it. Thank you for playing Ghost of Tomorrow demo. Download the early access on Steam. Well, that was spooky, all right. So I guess we went missing, we died, and we just watched ourselves unfold, missing and died. Um. Yeah, so that was, what was it? <laughs> Ghost of Tomorrow. Uh, I enjoyed it. That was fun. That was nice. It played very smoothly. Uh, I liked the environment. I liked, uh, they the, got the one scare in that got me, um, which is probably all you need for a, uh, a demo. Um, I'd be quite interested in playing the full game when it's uh, eventually released, so we'll keep our eye on it, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know what else to say, it was spooky, it was good, I enjoyed it. Goes to tomorrow. I guess we're doing three random games or something, so next game, bang. <laughs> Okay, we're back with a new game, Light Camera Slaughter. And it's the demo for the prologue of the game. So, it's come up, you can see, I've been sort of sitting here for like six minutes now. Setting up my recording and that. So let's see what this is about. The following footage you're about to witness is a true ongoing case. On July 9th, 1991, Officer M. Andrews was found brutally murdered at Miller & Son's slaughterhouse. Forensics predict he was killed with a 13-inch butcher knife once used at the now-abandoned slaughterhouse. This tape contains scenes of murder, blood, gore, and partial nudity. Nice. Also notice I haven't got my lights on. 
There we go, that's better. As if by magic. Lights, camera, slaughter, wish list. I assume that's if you want to put the game on your wish list. Well, for now, let's play. I hate working the night shift here. Let me just move my mic closer. But let, let me move closer to the mic. Why don't I do that and just tilt my head up a little bit? There we go. I hate working the night shift here. There's never any 911 calls this late. Everyone's gone back home, so I'm all alone. I mean, seriously. Last night I got a call from Miss Jenkins about her cat in a tree. Some people have no lives, just nerds who play video games. I prefer geeks. But that's enough complaining. I should make myself a water and start my shift. It's going to be a long night. I can interact with objects using E and walk around with WASD. Well, he's right about that. I'm walking around with WASD. Oh. The safe phone against the new vending machine. Damn shame I don't have any cash for a soda. Uh, it's a billboard filled with flyers about yard sales, charity runs and events. There's also some missing person posters dating back three months ago. Oh, uh, at least put the rubbish out. This trash can is full with garbage. Someone should really empty it. Not me, of course. Why not? I empty the rubbish out at work. It's getting dark outside and my ship's just started. Great. Looks so dark. Time magazine. It's a magazine dated 1989. That's Neil's year. Looks pretty old and well used. What kind of magazine is it? <laughs> if it's well used. What was that noise? It's not very gloopy. Is it the water cooler? It's a cup of water. Yes. I can't drink water out of a mug. It has to be a glass. So this is it. I'll just hold the mug now. Now that I have my drink, I can start taking some 911 calls that come in. I just need to find a desk with a red phone. This will let me take any incoming calls. It's a popular magazine, this Time magazine. Oh, what's this? Yeah, it's a red phone, all right. I can use this computer and phone to take calls. Sit down and take 911 calls. Why not, eh? I can answer the phone by looking and pressing E. Once I've answered the phone, I can ask multiple questions. I need to get as much information as possible. What is your name? Is it bothering? It's bothering me that the lines are sort of crooked in the ceiling. Hello, please help. I need the fire department. Where are you? Send them now. I'm at Danny's bar. It's a smoking hot babe. Lol. <laughs> Did you just call 911 for a pickup line? No, let's be professional. Mm. It's like at work, being a chef. Sometimes I'm this close to going out there and losing my rag. <laughs> and not, might not seem like it, but some people really piss me off. Professional. Hmm. Flipping jackass, what a waste of time. Well, get some glue to this chair. Oh. Hello? Excuse me, who is this? What's wrong? Another prank call, great. Well, you get a feeling that wasn't a prank call. We're going to get one eventually. It's not a prank call, aren't we? Yeah, I want to report a disturbance. 
What's going on? Four kids are trespassing at the mother and son's slaughterhouse. Okay, so um, can you see them? They just went in. I, I can hear screams. Hurry. Police are on the way. Hurry. They're arriving now, sir. Oh, are we the police? July 2nd, 1990, Officer Emma Andrews would go missing whilst on duty in the Maston Lake area. His last known whereabouts were Miller and Son's slaughterhouse, just north of Maston Lake. Although his body was found, it was too mutilated and outright horrific to identify at the time. Specialists say he was hacked with a sort of butcher knife, roughly 13 inches in length, with ter tremendous force. This weapon was never found. M. Andrews was responding to a dis dispatch call of disturbance at Miller and Son's slaughterhouse. Although dispatch lost all contact with Andrews after responding to this call, it was believed that he was taken and killed whilst inside the slaughterhouse. However, only Andrews will know the full story. Are we going to play as Andrews? We are. Dispatch, this is Andrews. I've just arrived at the scene now. No sign of anyone here so far. Over. <laughs> Ten four, Andrew. Mr. Jenkins said he saw four kids enter the slaughterhouse. Probably some rave again. Well, I'll look for any clues and away into the building. I'll let you know if I see anything. Ten four, Andrews. Pass my best wishes to your wife. How long has she got? Three months. I visit her in hospital tonight. I'll pass your message on over and out. Just notice how delayed and laggy I am on this screen. I wonder if it's because of the filter. Let's see. Is that any better? If we're being honest, no. <laughs> well, we'll persevere. We'll stick with it like this for a while anyway. This is my undercover car. I haven't been out much since the baby. Let's get this over with. Maybe if I just shrink myself slightly, that'll help. Let's, let's try that. Maybe, maybe, might be a bit better, we'll see. Right, which one's supposed to go this way? Apparently not. Or oh, how warped the ground is. That's more horrific than anything else right now. See so if my face cam is a bit laggy, do apologize. This must be their car. The hood is warm to the touch and the motor starter is still clicking. It must have arrived within the last hour or so. hole in the fence. I go here. Guess not. Lakota. I'll go that way as well. Where am I going? <laughs> Where am I going? I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I mean, I would have fought through there, but it doesn't seem as there's a way. It was control. It gave me the controls, ironically enough, earlier. I knew I had to get through there. That toilet. Oh, that's a toilet. I find toilets in games funny. I don't know why. Is my volume turned up all the way? It is now. I'm 
Ooh, spooky. That's it. Disturbance. Dispatch, can you hear me? Damn radio. I need to go back outside and get signal. Oh, it's gonna be locked. I came through a one-way door. I need to find an exit and call for backup. I could use space to arm a flashlight. I could also use shift to sprint. Oh, we should tell me. We should have taught me how to crouch. It's locked from the other side. Just the walls just feel weird. Feel the all bent. The smell coming from this toilet is horrendous. Searching soy toilet, yeah? Always wanting to put my hands in shit. I found nothing. Well, wipe your hands. <laughs> Come on, we're searching all the toilet. Like, that's just my natural thought. Like, you know, when I see a toilet that's just full of crap, I found a door handle. I just need to find the door with the missing handle. It's like, surely I should know that I'm looking for something first. I found nothing. <sighs> So surely I should know what I'm looking for first, like I, like I need a door handle. That's a lot of one-way doors, isn't there? Choose is where I use a door handle. Keyboard. Employee meeting, 19th of March, 1984. I had a meeting with George Miller today regarding his strange behaviour around the animal carcasses. He has a strange fascination with the dead and was caught taking photos, which is strictly prohibited. He didn't speak throughout the whole meeting, which isn't surprising, knowing George. He's always been quiet, but did a good day's work. I'm starting to worry about him a little. With some more notes. Is this the same? Yeah. Well, if we've got two notes, like the same two notes in two separate piles. Oh dear. Surely we should be wanting to investigate the bloody handprints. It's always the vent, isn't it? Well, that don't seem dangerous. Let's take advantage of this. And let's go this way and see what we can find. So the funny thing is, and you don't really think of this as a viewer. Before we read the old note, I'll finish my thought. Like I've played some games for this channel and the videos are usually like a couple of gigabytes. I played one other game, Security Booth, where the graphics are like grainy. I don't know if that's anything to do with it, but it was significantly larger file size than anything else that I played. Like the same length as well. So it makes me wonder if this game's having an effect on my face cam or, or whatever. Georgie has been acting strange lately. This is uh, June 86, I assume June. Not the sixth day of a random month. His fascination with dead animals is becoming quite concerning. The look on his face when he kills the cattle is disturbing. I don't know who he is anymore. Ever since his mother passed, he's becoming more and more encapsulated and withheld. 
I'm going to have a chat with him today. Maybe he just needs a chat from an old friend. Ryder. Georgie's the killer. See if we couldn't figure that out by the first note. It's Georgie, isn't it? Georgie's the one. Georgie's gonna be diddling me. Oh, that texture, man. Steam. It's a red valve wheel jammed at the on position. Yeah, I'll read the sign. This will be the last you hear from me. A flickering candle on the table, a golden tear. There is only panic. Blighted. I beg for forgiveness. He who lives. I walk through that. No. Pipe's broken. This doesn't seem like a realistic slaughterhouse. Oh, there's something behind here. Oh, I do get the feeling it's down there. Hello, Georgie. Hello. One, six, three, one. It's a red valve wheel. One, six, three, one. Remember that, everyone. Oh, it's going to be here, isn't he? I'm going to have to run back. Oh, I can hear things. Steam has finally stopped. I can pass through safely. Do I want to pass through? Can you actually take damage in this game? I think I need to open it with this keypad. out of the way I need I feel so I might need all the mouse space I can muster tools gonna have some tools truly I've got a weapon on me I'm a police officer Would you not take the circular saw? Why would you not take the circular saw? Oh, is that a thing? No. He's going to be after me, isn't he? Oh, 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 that's not fair. How could I have avoided that? 
How could I have avoided that? It was right there. Thank you for playing the demo of Lights, Camera, Slaughter. Is that what's supposed to happen? I was supposed to be trapped. I didn't even see what he looked like. It's interesting playing the game. I feel so bigger games should perhaps take advantage of this idea. A game where you know your character dies in the end. We're going back to the start. If 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 I can't like pick up from where I left off, it looks like back to the start. I'm not gonna play through it again. I mean you know it's it's a it's a decent game and there's like a whole genre full of these styles of games. I know it's only a prologue, I know it's just a demo. It's fine. Don't know where the partial nudity came in. Maybe I should play through again just to see that. Um yeah, it was basic, it was fine, it was eerie. Don't like the moving textures on everything, that was just too much for me. It made me feel a bit nauseous, but oh well. Um, but yeah, that was like camera slaughter. Let's move on to the third game. Go on, they'll edit it. Edit it, go on. Okay, we're back for game number three. Don't, in brackets, open your eyes. Again, I know nothing about this game. Don't know what's going on. It's getting late. My eyelids have begun to feel heavy. I better go to sleep. I leave aside the book I've been reading and look out my window. The process of falling asleep is always a struggle against noise. Barking dogs, police sirens, even my own intrusive thoughts. But not even the turning gears of my brain are producing much sound. Tonight is just oddly... Quiet. Quiet. Too quiet. I feel restless. My sight veers towards the hallway outside my door. Which, by the way, I can't sleep with the door open. Door's gotta be closed, whether I'm on my own, if there's someone else in the house. Like, just throughout all my life, the door's got to be closed. The distance between my room and the opposite wall is only ten steps long. I'd know, since I've made a habit of counting them whenever I go out. But the thing is, I've got 14 steps in my house, and I know that because when I was younger I just used to count them. One, two, three, absent-mindedly, but always. I don't know why. Maybe I just like being aware of my surroundings to the smallest details. But tonight is different. The hallway looks like it stretches into nothingness, like the throat of a gargantuan beast. Logical thinking cries that it's just my imagination. There can't be anything wrong or different about it. It's just the hallway. But... I don't want to look at it. So I take a deep breath and close my eyes. In my room. There's a bed. In my room. There's a wardrobe. In my room. There's pictures framed on the wall. 
My room is a part of myself. It's a world I know like the back of my hand. Were someone to blindfold me and ask me to find my way around, I'd do so without the slightest difficulty. As long as nothing changes, having my eyes closed makes no difference. In this room, I can always find what I want to find, because in this room, I know how everything looks. I need to wake up early tomorrow, it feels. I should really try to sleep. <clears throat> What's that sound? Are those footsteps? No, that's impossible. It must be my imagination. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay, left click, uh, pause. But it's getting closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. They are gone. Right. There's no way someone could be there. Hmm. In my room, there is a big scary man. He's trying to diddle me. Hey. Open your eyes. But the game told me not to. I don't open my eyes. <clears throat> open your eyes. Well, that's convinced me. Look at me. I do my best to ignore the voice. Why won't you look at me? Where are your manners? If a stranger asks for help, is it right to ignore them? Honestly? Is that I can feel someone breathing over my ear. It's cold. I will share a secret with you. Ooh, I love a secret. I have never seen myself before. I don't know if my face is ugly. There's a mirror right there, bruv. I don't know the color of my skin. You don't need to. <laughs> I don't know if I'm even here. You're here. That or is not. why I need you. <laughs> you won't find me anywhere, and soon you will forget like a faded dream. I know you're not asleep. You listen with those tiny ears of yours. They look so fragile, like I could almost grab them. I feel something caress my ear. Put my fingers around them. Searching for will slip away. The thought terrifies. 
terrifies me. It terrifies me so much. So I always keep my eyes peeled, even if there's nothing to see. That way, nothing will slip away, no matter where it goes. And no matter where it hides, no matter how terrifying the world might be, no matter the countless terrible things I witnessed by mistake in the process, no matter what, I will never blink. I will forever be confused by the worlds around me. I will forever be lost. But what is that something that I'm searching for? It's been so long since my wandering began, I can no longer recall the feelings that drove me to it. What is it? Is it something I can hold? Is it a being of flesh and bones? Is it nearby? Is it you? Hey, have you ever looked so fervently for something that you end up losing yourself in the process? Have you? I remain silent. These eyes. Are these my eyes? Are those eyes your eyes? Yes. Good answer. Yet there is only one way to know the truth. Open your eyes. Do I open my eyes? So no. you won't look at me. You just said you're gonna disappear if I look at you, if I open my eyes. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter whether you're bald or have long flowing locks. The colour of your eyes, your skin, your face, your hair, your lack thereof. It's what's inside. And inside, it's that consciousness that makes you who you are. My friend, you don't need to see yourself. Your, identi your identity is not defined by your looks. Even though your eyes are so pretty, I can't see them, but I can imagine them behind their veil of flesh. Mm, flesh. Now, like pearls and shiny like jewels. So, so pretty. <sighs> A breath of cold air caresses my eyelashes. It's fine. We still have time. I'm glad we still have time. The night is still and silent. Not me, obviously. Do you know what a door is? Of course you know. You have one right there at the verge of your little world. A door is a barrier to keep the bad out. The bad can be anything. A bad person. A bad smell. But plenty of both of them. And sometimes, me. Oh, you're saying you're bad. I can't open doors. I find them tricky. Should I push or pull? Should I turn the knob left or right? Like generally you can just like either read what it says or if you go to push it and it doesn't work, try pulling it. Like you don't have to just leave it as oh, I'm gonna turn the knob right, oh it didn't work. Like I need to leave it. So if it, if you turn it right and it doesn't work, just turn it left. <laughs> Should I try? That is extreme. Should I chip away at it, hoping it will fall apart? That's the shining. And what happens when it opens? Do I close it behind me? Yes, if it's already closed when you open it. I hate it when I close the door, someone comes in, and they just leave the door open. Don't do that. If the door's closed, put leave the door how you found it. 
<laughs> Do I keep it open? But that might be rude to the person who had it closed. But then, how do I get out? And what happens if the wind pushes it close? What then? So many options. So many things that could go wrong. Whenever I stand in front of a closed door, it paralyzes me. I stare at it for a long time and think of my excuses because that's all they are. Kind of getting uh, adventures with anxiety vibes from this. It's kind of a metaphor, it's not even just about doors, I think. I mean, there's different ways I can interpret this. One thing that I'm thinking of is if I find something I can interact with, once I've interacted with that thing, there'll be an action, a consequence because of it. Even just simple things. Like, um, I used to have bad anxiety when it came to like going to the shop. I don't know if I mentioned this in the anxiety video. And like, it wasn't just about, oh, I really don't want to like, you know, got a lot of social anxiety, don't really want to talk to the, the, the person at the till. There's also things like, um, what about if I put my, my debit card in the machine? What if it don't work? What if I can't remember my PIN number? What if I don't put it in the right way? It's going to be really embarrassing. And like that's just something that I just got over and now I don't think twice about making conversation with the cashier about putting the card in. So I just do it if I, I even do it wrong. Sometimes you put do a contactless payment and because you haven't put your PIN in for so long, it asks you to put the PIN number in. I saw some people like really embarrassed when that happens. And I'm just like, let's put your pin number in. <laughs> it, it, like, it, it just happens. That's not something you can control. That's where a lot of anxiety comes from. It's just situations where you, you're not in control. You know, or if you are in control, you don't think you're going to make the right decisions or it's going to be a letdown. What bothers me the most about closed doors is the idea they exist to keep me out. It fills me with the need to go in, so I search for a crevice or a window, anything that might be open, anything that might let me in. I'm not good with doors, but as long as there's a place where I can fit, then I can go in anywhere. Every night, I hop across the shadows of the streets. I'm careful so as to not be caught by the light in my eternal search. Pick a place where to rest. Again, that's kind of another metaphor. Just you'd rather lurk in the shadows and not bring attention to yourself. Yeah, that's something I can identify with. I slip in and spend the night wherever is comfortable without alerting anyone. Usually it's a cellar, an attic, anywhere with dust, with dirt. That could be a uh, a euphemism for low self-esteem. You know, you, you, if you're that low, you might feel as though you're essentially no better than du dust or dirt. And so you want to hang around in those places. You want to sort of stay as low as possible to not bring any attention to yourself. I feel at home there. But sometimes, just sometimes, an urge swells inside of me, the urge to be seen. And again, it's like when you, you have that anxiety, you sort of just, you're calling out for help because you, you actually do want just that bit of attention just to, just to help, just to help you, just to help yourself. So I search hard for a door that's open, for an entryway covered in darkness. For someone to be at the other end, awake, as if expecting me, but you won't look at me, even though you had your door open for visitors. Why is that? Another thing that's on my mind as well, like if this is a metaphor for sort of like a, a sort of dark place in your mind where anxiety and depression festers and things like that. We've done nothing to encourage this conversation. 
apart from just close our eyes and just let it happen. It's all just coming out by itself. We're not questioning it. We're not looking it in the eye. We're just allowing it to fester. Are you afraid? Do I scare you? No, that can't be it. We have been chatting for so long. You haven't chased me out. That means you welcome me. So I'm certain that if I were to reach out my hand. Something moves over my bed sheets. You would reciprocate and grasp it. I'm sure your hands are warm. So very warm. Because people are always warm. Hey, how do my hands look? When my warmth finally meets yours, how will it feel? Answer me. They look tired. They look deceitful. They look incomplete. They look tired. That may be so. These fingers of mine have touched so many things. They are always stretching forwards, reaching out for something. The tip of my fingers dance over the surfaces that I travel, and their sensations <clears throat> reach the core of my brain, be it the softness of the first spring flowers, or the roughness of a wall made out of rubbish, caressing, grabbing, clawing. Sorry, this is a British term, rubbish. I was expecting garbage. No matter the time of day. No matter if I'm awake or asleep, as if they had a mind of their own. Even now, they clutch onto the fabric of your bed sheets. They like how these thousands of threads intertwine with each other. The rustle of fabric against fabric, of skin against skin is irresistible. They want more. They want to feel closer, to have it between them and around them, more and more and more. Sometimes, however, they can't reach as far as they'd like. That's when I lend a hand, I take over and stretch, 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 and they grow. Maybe just the length of a fingernail every time, but they grow just so they can reach out, clutch what they want, and then throw it aside, discarded, and forgotten. That's why they are tired, because they never stop seeking. They never stop seeking. And most likely, never will. Constantly looking for that, uh... I can't even think of the word, <laughs> just for that, uh, not acknowledgement, but kind of acknowledgement, I can't think of the word right now. Just looking for that um, acknowledgement that uh, other things are going to be okay, or that things will, um, you know, just, just a glimmer of hope. That's kind of what you look for when you have sort of a, a dark side takes over. Even like with me at work now, so I can get stressed at work, but I think, oh, record these videos when I get home. So it gets me through the day. Hey. Hey. Have you ever stretched your fingers to grab a hold of something important, only to learn that it's been long out of your grasp? Have you? I remain silent. These hands. Are these my hands? A yes. good answer. Yet. There is only one way to know the truth. Open your eyes. No. So you won't look at me? No. Even though my hands could be the same as yours? My feeling is, is that if this is a metaphor for depression, anxiety, or other sort of negative thoughts, 
They're going to be there. They're going to be talking to you. You don't need to sort of... Like, you, you do need to, like, face them. But you, you, you can just... If you can figure out why they're there, then that's, like, half the battle. You know, you can then work on doing something to... Like, the, this CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, where you look at the causes and things like that. I, I, I tried that. It didn't do anything for me. I knew what the causes were. I needed to deal with them. And like you just, had, like with me personally, I was just able to cast to one side all the negativity and just slowly build myself up to the point where I could get these little victories in life. Think about it. Maybe you and I are similar. No, I know we are. I can feel it in my skin. Oh. My skin is pulsating. It has been long since this happened. It's a sign of my innermost emotions flowing out. I wander the world, wanting to be seen. I'll be satisfied as long as someone tells me how I look, but it's not like anyone will do. If it did, then it would be oh so easy, since I could show myself. To everyone at once, every living person in this land, and ask them all the same question, someone will answer. There's no doubt about it, but it might not be the answer I wish for. Since I don't want to be judged, I don't want to be perceived as something I'm not. It scares me. That is why, when someone is on the verge of looking at me, I shy away. I hide, fading into the dark. But you might be different. If it's you, it might be possible to stand still, if only for a second. That way you can help me, and we can both be fulfilled. Ah, just thinking about it, it makes me feel... Feel... Something. I cannot describe it. I am not good. With words, there was a person in my past who taught me to speak like a person. They were not good at it either. And thinking back on it, they certainly didn't enjoy it. To teach a wordless being how to talk must be a challenge. Yet, they did. Simply because they could. It is weird to remember. Because it makes me think of why I want to be seen, and I am not. Sure, I don't care much for my appearance. You want me to tell you how you look? I don't want to be judged. But if that were it, I could easily stay out of sight. So why is it? Why do I want someone to recognize me so much? Maybe it's only because I can. Because everyone gets to be recognized, but me, but I will, soon, once you open your eyes. Ah, there it is again. Just thinking about the moment you unveil your sight onto me, and you finally take those bed sheets off your body, and you inspect every crevice of mine, and you finally, finally, finally tight lips of yours to let me hear what I am and to maybe even give me a name. It makes me feel, but I don't know what. Surely it would be evident if you were to look at my face. Hey, what does my expression look like when that veil of uncertainty finally disappears? What will we convey to each other? Answer me. A cheerful smile. A surprised grimace. Or an emotionless stare. An emotionless 
motionless stare. Yeah. If it may be so, expressions are difficult. They require one's face to contort in many different ways. I am not capable of that. If, uh, if you can't be seen, there's not much point in expressions. Everything about me is stiff. Nice. From the way I walk, to the way I talk, to the way I feel, it is something I noticed long ago. I may hurt and I may grow, but I do not change, not in the way other people do. People interact with each other, they form connections, they experience thrills. A person becomes someone different with each passing second, turning old and perishing. However, I don't think I'm capable of any of those things. My journey began long ago, longer than any person has ever journeyed. And in my life, I have seen others born and die, born and die. A person's existence is so fleeting, and yet so many things happen to them. So many worthwhile memories. It is something I lack. Were I to write a book, I could not fill a single page. It's not for the lack of memories, but rather because these memories mean nothing to me, save for a minuscule number. They are all the same. Yeah, if you're depressed or have anxiety. Not as if it quite often feels different. I mean, may have had anxiety in the past. So different triggers, different causes, I just felt really crap either way. Blending with each other into a mottled grey. No, I, I couldn't like, explain a specific anxiety attack I've ever had in my life, for instance. They all just feel like the same. Lacking the meaning people often give to that which they care about. Perhaps if someone else had lived what I had, they would see meaning. They would treasure it, but I cannot. No matter how I try, I can't see any worth in what I do, and by extension, in what I am, I want for someone to tell me how I look, yet, I don't see that as important, no one but me would care, so why should I care, but that doesn't mean I have never felt, I feel things, joy, sorrow, fear, I am always feeling, and right now. Three of the Cobra unit in Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> I am feeling strongly. It's here in my pulsating skin. You say my expression <clears throat> is emotionless. That it shows nothing. And if you say so, it must be true. But soon you will see something. Because what I'm feeling is not nothing. Hey, have you ever masked yourself with indifference only to hide the overwhelming emotions hiding beneath? Have you? I remain silent. This expression is this my expression. I see. Thank you. You have truly helped me tonight. These <laughs> are my eyes. These are my hands. And this is my expression. I consider these my most treasured features, and you have helped me picture them all. No one has done this for me. I feel a connection with you, one born out of honest gratitude. But there is one step left. You need to make sure of the truth. It is the only way to finally understand each other. So please, I beg of you, open your eyes. <laughs> no, it's kind of tempting, but... No. No. I see. I understand. No. It's fine. You have still helped me by answering my questions. No one has done that for me before. 
so I have no right to ask for anything else. You can ask. Does a male say yes, but you can ask. No, that is a lie. Ever since I stepped into this room, you have refused to engage with me. Not even once. Not even once, not even once, not even once, not even once, not even once. Not even once. Did you open your eyes? Not even once. Did you look at my face? You stayed there, acting as if you were asleep, feigning ignorance and not moving an inch, at times making me believe that our conversation was just in my head. You haven't opened your mouth, but you didn't need to. I can hear far, far beyond what most others can. I did interact. I told you what your eyes, expression, and hands look like. And I can see further than what others would consider the dark, empty bottom. That's why I know that I wasn't wrong. You are like me. We are the same. You too. Look for what's not there. You too. Reach out for what might hurt you. And you too are a liar. The type that shows one thing and feels another. But you made a mistake. I know you're lying because every answer you've given me so far has been wrong. I am not what you said I am. These eyes, these hands, this expression. They aren't mine. Maybe they are yours. But I do not care. Not anymore. Open your eyes. <laughs> I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to be perceived for something I'm not. And that's all you did. So now, you will open your eyes and see me for what I truly am. You said so. Remember that no. in this room, <laughs> you know how everything looks. Okay, I said that. It was those words that brought me here. So you have to, you have to do right by that which you claimed. It is time. Open your eyes. You had your chance. <laughs> it's not up to you anymore. You won't open your eyes. I will. Something coils around my head. The pressure around my skull is unbearable. I hear something chatter. I want to answer, but they've grabbed onto my head and won't let me talk. But what I see, what I see is... I close my eyes.
There's something in my hand. It's what they left behind. What is it? It feels important. But I can no longer open my eyes. And that's don't open your eyes. I enjoyed that. That was good. Out of the three games I've played, uh, that one was my favourite. I feel as though there's more meaning to it. Although, I'm trying to sort of construct how I feel about the ending. I think my philosophy in that game was to basically not give in to what I was being told to do because anxiety and depression and such if that is what this game is trying to find uh, a meaning in like it's, it's telling you to do something and the idea of like, ang like anxiety is the thing I've probably got the most experience in the idea of anxiety why a normal person you know normal person has anxiety it's to basically warn you you know um if i'm walking down the street there's a giant beehive hanging from a tree and i can either go down that road or i can go down a, a different road i'm gonna feel anxious about going to the beehive because bees might attack me <laughs> and sting me um that's why you have anxiety um, to, to, to warn you about something that could happen. Have you been stung yet? No. Can you be stung? Yes. And the idea about uh, anxiety being an issue in people's lives is because they have a, an incredible overabundance of it. You know, it's like the example I just gave. There'll be some people that think I best not go out in case I get stung by a bee. There's no evidence that there's a bee around. <laughs> Yeah, so um, my idea was to not give in to those sort of thoughts, to say, listen, I'm being told to open my eyes, I'm being told to wake up, I'm being told to do something that I don't want to do, and so I'm going to ignore it, and I'm going to um, continue essentially trying to sleep. Um, Perhaps in the end I should have like confronted my fears, but I decided to not to. Um, I'm quite curious to sort of just see what happens if you do open your eyes. I might just kind of load a game. No, it's interesting that it can save like that quickly. Um, so let's go to this. Do I open my eyes to say you yes? Your chance. It's not up to you, Odo. I will. Okay. Eventually, uh, it comes a point what? where uh, there comes a point where you don't have a chance, a choice. Um, tell you what, history. No. Um, or if I can just essentially sort of speed run this, can I? I'm just going to keep pressing space. We'll see how far we can get. I'm, I'm just going to open my eyes at the first chance I get to open my eyes. Just just curious to see how what happens, how it works. I can't even imagine that, like... You'll open your eyes and he'll just say, like... You know, no. Let's just try it. I open my eyes. There's nothing here. So I close my eyes again. Uh, that's just the end of the game. I was obviously a bit more climactic than that. Uh, I swear to see what happened when I clicked on the eye. Oh well. Uh, so yeah, that was Down Up Your Eyes. Quite enjoyed that. Um, I actually played Ghost of Tomorrow yesterday. Um into why I'm wearing different clothes <laughs> but um yeah I, I like that one I think there's potential in it again I like the idea of um you know you're um 
you're sort of lost. You may be the ghost of someone that's lost, uh, who's been killed. Again, it's just like a prologue or a demo, so we don't know the full extent of it. But I quite enjoyed that one. Lloyd's Camera Slaughter, that was... That was, like, standard. That's what I like to call a sort of... A lot of people won't understand this, a Channel 5 movie or a Channel 4 late-night movie. It's just one of those movies that you put on on, like, a Friday night when you've come back from the pub and you've got a kebab. And you just want, like, just something where you don't need to give a lot of thought. You, you just watch it and after that. Um, I, I, I assume there's more to that game, but I do want to have to play through the whole thing again just to try and uh, um, see what happens. Um, I can imagine how it goes, and I think in the end, like, you seemingly die anyway, so that's what happens, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and, yeah... Um, that open your eyes like i said i really enjoyed that um i assume that there's hidden meaning in it um and i guess there's nothing more i can say about it i've said it all in this video if you like what you're seeing leave a comment subscribe to me check me out on twitch twitter instagram everything chef neelich um I, I don't think I've got any fakes at the moment. I don't think it's going to be a while before someone pretends to be me to get subscribers or whatever, so... Just use your own initiative. <laughs> um, check out the Discord -age. Links are in the description. And if you've got any suggestions for games I should play or games that I could put into a compilation, like free random horror games, free random whatever games, let me know in a comment. Um... I guess that's it. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.